This is Paralives, and it's coming to challenge The Sims. Paralives is bringing a bunch of new ideas to lifestyle management games, and in this video, I'll be breaking down every noteworthy feature shown off so far. So let's get right into it, because after all, The Sims could do with some healthy competition. And there's definitely room in the life sim genre for a totally fresh perspective. Here are some things that I think Paralives does better than The Sims. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, click the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel Griff Griffin GG for absolutely hit and miss gaming content whenever I feel like it let's get started Okay, first up, you can build with no restrictions in Paralives. Unlike The Sims, you can switch off the grid system and place walls and items wherever you want in the world. Now, this is a game changer. Essentially, it lets you construct any sort of building you want. Check it out, there's even curved walls. So, if you wanted, theoretically, you could build a perfectly round house. Let's see a replay. Lovely stuff. The grid system isn't absent entirely though, you can enable it as an option and use it as a sort of guideline, which I think I'm going to do at the start just so my house, you know, doesn't look like it's been sketched by a five-year-old. But if you're even a somewhat competent architect with experience building in The Sims, the ability to turn off grids and follow your heart instead of the lines will open up so many possibilities. No two houses will look the same, and also it just makes construction super, super simple. Just look how quickly the player in this developer video is able to build a multi-story house. Lay down a few walls, raise the floor, drop some staircases, done. Gridless construction is one of Paralive's most important features, and that's why I started with it. Onto the second way Paralive sets itself apart from The Sims, and that's optional snapping. Snapping is the term given to how objects and furniture must snap into place in order to actually be part of your house. The Sims enforces snapping on all objects. So, for example, in The Sims, if you're installing a kitchen counter, you can only rotate it in eight directions. Unless, you know, you want to use cheats and run into all sorts of clipping issues, there is no free rotation in The Sims, but there is in Paralives. Let's look at how easy it is to install a kitchen. You can put the counter wherever you want. When it turns Christmas, you can put presents and stockings at any angle, and in the bathroom, you can place the toilet roll anywhere on the wall and even turn it around. That's luxury. Optional snapping is like optional gridless construction, so you can turn on snapping if you want to, but it's nice to have that freedom. I think houses are going to look and feel a whole lot more organic. Number three in the list of things Paralives is doing better than The Sims is object stacking. Not only can you place items anywhere on the ground, but anywhere on each other. An example of that is with this desk. You can put computer monitors anywhere on it and at any angle. In The Sims, you just can't do this. Items have set squares that they have to occupy on surfaces. So, for instance, a monitor can only go in certain places on a desk, and that extends to things like, you know, dishes. In The Sims, if you've ever let plates pile up, you'll see that your Sim orders them in neat rows. Even in the height of laziness, there's still this unrealistically ordered edge. Like, houses never truly look lived in. But in Paralives, there's no such restriction, so you can stack shelves on top of each other, put plants wherever you want, and let all the dishes it's pile up like a like a lazy pig. You might put a paper tray on a desk or go wild and put, I don't know, balance a kitchen sink on a bin. I don't know if the game will actually let you do that. It seems like they'll at least need some rules in place to stop it getting out of hand. But again, this feature gives the game a natural quality. Stacking even lets you change the nature of furniture. Look how you can stack beds to create bunk beds. You could probably create your own model art installations by stacking a bunch of cupboards together. Given you can already place any item anywhere on the ground in Paralives, it only makes sense you can also place items anywhere on each other too. Number four, adjustable furniture sizes. You can change the size of seemingly every piece of furniture in the game, extending a kitchen counter to fill up a gap, turning a table lamp into a floor lamp, and making a tiny window massive. It's an intelligence size change too. Notice how the light doesn't just enlarge uniformly, which would sort of make the scale of it seem like it came from a giant's house. Instead, the bulb stays the same size while the stand gets bigger. Letting players freely adjust object sizes sounds like a good workaround to the problem of limited items, because because after all, there's no way Paralives can hope to match the sheer number of items The Sims has. Let's say two players are each making different bedrooms in Paralives and all they're given is a choice between five different pieces of furniture. It sounds confining at first, but those bedrooms have the potential to look radically different given players are able to change the sizes of the furniture inch by inch. Fifth on the list and the final time I'm going to be talking about house building, here's how Paralives is letting you construct your actual home on a one-to-one -one scale. The devs have said they're putting a measuring system in the game so you can capture your house down to the last millimeter. I mean, you would have to go around your real house measuring the walls and writing it down and stuff, which seems a bit obsessive to be honest, but you know, someone's gonna do it. Creating my house is something I 
they always try and do in The Sims, but it never truly looks like mine. Furniture is either bigger or smaller than the real life equivalent, and the distance between objects is never really exact. But given in Power Lives there's gridless construction, adjustable object sizes, and a measuring system, you can be as exact or chaotic as you please. Number six, procedural animation. If you're not totally familiar with the term, it's basically a system that generates animations on the fly, rather than using set animations created by an animator. Procedural animation is how your power folk, which is the name given to your playable characters basically, will be able to interact with the diverse array of furniture you lay out for them. No matter where the handles are on a kitchen counter, your power folk's hands will grasp onto them. Wherever you place the curtains, your power folk will find them. This is not a feature of The Sims, which is why all the objects in the game come in one side. To give you another example, it's also the reason all the dogs in the Pets expansion are the same size. Making animations for each dog breed would have been a time-intensive process, so you can sort of understand why. But Paralives is approaching this from a completely different angle, letting the computer, rather than the animator, do all the work. I mean, the animator still has work to do, but you know what I mean. Number seven, and we are onto the character creator, or in this game, the power maker. As with a lot of things in Power Lives, the aim is to make it instantly accessible. So you can see here how you can go right over to the chest of drawers and edit your appearance in game. And I'm not just talking about being able to select outfits you've made previously, like in The Sims. You can create custom outfits right there in game without any loading screens. Now that's definitely a plus because The Sims, it's got a lot of loading screens. If you just want to customize your hair, you know, change something up, put a bit of lippy on, you have to go to a loading screen. So yeah, good riddance to loading screens. Anyway, as for the power maker, it does look very light right now, to be honest. There's only space, as we can see, the three outfits, and we're not being shown what sort of outfits you can actually pick because there probably isn't a lot at this point, but it's doing a lot with less. So there are slight for weight and muscle, separate sliders for head size and different body parts. At the cost of some dev, it's more streamlined and immediate, which is fine. You're not going to outdo the Sims on content, so try and beat them at convenience. Number eight, and here's something a few eagle-eyed people noticed in the Paralives gameplay trailer, and that's the existence of pets. Not DLC pets you have to pay extra for, but pets in the game right off the bat. The developers did confirm in an AMA that you can select a dog, cat, and parrot to have as your furry companion, with more coming later. I'd quite like a manatee. I'm not gonna get my hopes up too much with pets though. Think of how many dog breeds there are, all the different ways they move and act and how difficult that would be to animate. I think our choices might be quite limited in this regard, but hey, it's nice to have any kind of four-legged friend around really, except hyenas. So of pudding, I don't like them. Nine, and continuing the topic of customization, the color wheel. It looks like it's gonna let you change the color of pretty much everything. So here we see it being used to alter the color of things that grow out of your head and things that go on your head. You can change the light color too for if you ever wanted to live in a red-hued underworld. And it's not just the color, but texture. Back on the headphones, you can see both the ear cups and the frame change. To be honest, I'm more interested in textures like wood and metal and marble and all of that rather than bold primary colors as I don't really want to live in a big red and blue clown house, but it does seem like every object in Paralyze is compatible with the color wheel, which can only be a good thing in terms of setting your house apart. Number 10, and here we go, this is something I've not seen in The Sims, a fully fledged neighborhood builder. This lets you build your very own neighborhood from the ground up. If you did want to try something like this in The Sims, to the best of my knowledge, I mean, maybe there is a way to do this, but I think you would have to go and demolish each building separately, and it, you know, it would just take ages. But here you can do it all in one go in this overview. So you've got precise control over exactly how your neighborhood looks. Hopefully you'll get the opportunity to build roads too, but that might be a step too far at this point. You can build a cul-de-sac, gated community, or crime-ridden estate. A small detail I like is the price of the property changes in real time, depending on how big it is. So there won't be any nasty surprises when you make a massive mansion that you can't afford. Number 11, graphics. And this is not something life sims are usually known for. I say life sims like there's loads of them. There's only one and we know what it is. It's the sims because I keep bringing it up. Anyway, the look of Paralyzed is utterly, utterly charming. A big reason for that is the dynamic lighting. It streams through windows to give it this lovely soft look. It's not baked into the environment. It changes depending on where you put the light and the result is this lovely organic look. Weirdly, it kind of reminds me of the difference between the visuals in Fever and Pez. You wouldn't say one is better than the other, they just approach in different ways. What I can say about Power Lives is it's in that sweet spot between simple and detailed. As a byproduct, that means it will likely run well on most machines no matter how much clutter you fill your house up with. And for me, that's gonna be a lot. 
On to our final entry, and that's Steam Workshop Support. This game has it, and that's always a great sign for longevity. It basically means players will be able to create Paralives content that you can download for free forever or until the Steam servers burn down. And content will get made, that's almost a guarantee, because even the worst games known to man build a following on Steam Workshop. So expect people to be making loads of extra items for the game not long after launch. There's going to be things like new furniture, new power folk, and entire houses. And you can probably expect some sort of SpongeBob-shaped fridge. Given how small the Paralyze team is, workshop support is going to be so, so important, as hundreds or even thousands of players contribute their own ideas and content, and you can just sit there downloading them for free like a big old parasite. Now, I have tried to be pretty positive in this video because it is an early stage for Paralyze, and I just want to give it the benefit of the doubt, but there are bumps in the road that need addressing. For instance, in Paralyze, there's no job or school system in place yet, so your para folk just mill around the house all day. So right now, it's more of a dollhouse sim than an actual life sim you know even though it does look like the sims it's actually got quite a lot in common with animal crossing barring uh, you know the fossils and the, all the owl shit another reason to curb your expectations slightly is that there are only four employees at the development studio that makes paralives and only three of them actually make content so this is going to be slow progress the list of what they want to put in the game is long and includes Pet creation, a screenshot mode, activities like camping and karate, need to decay, generic traits, and NPCs like the police and firefighters. Right now, the devs are still figuring out how to implement some pretty basic elements. So things like how many life stages there are, how long the seasons last, and even how death works. Can Parafolk get electrocuted? I don't know. I would like to see it. My point is there's still a long, long way to go. I cannot see Paralives coming out anytime within the next year, but what is there looks exciting. I love the art style, I love the streamlined controls, and I love the flexible customization. Given the small size of the developer studio, it would probably benefit them to launch the game with just a few bits of furniture and leave the content creation to the fans. Otherwise, we're not gonna live to see Paralives because we'll be para-dead. Thank you so much for watching guys, this is my end card, here's my face, here's a link to a few other videos, um, hope you have a great day, remember to subscribe to me if you like my content, and if you want some more content, click the uh, like button and subscribe to my channel, GG Griff Griffin. I haven't really got a good end to this video, just kind of fade out, let me just fade out my voice, uh, see ya. Uh...